Hello viewers, Matt Vidpro AI here reporting to you in space on the surface of the sun. I know it's really bright, but I think pretty soon I'm gonna have a solution. You see, I'm planning on just tinting my window. People told me to change spots in my room. They told me to put a big green screen behind myself, but my solution's much simpler. I'm just tinting the window. That was one of Voice Mod's many AI voices. Anyways, yes viewers, I have some wonderful AI news for you today. We're talking AI language models and we're gonna do a head-to-head -head and see if OpenAI's competition can catch up to them. Viewers, today Anthropic has released Claude 2. This is their language model, similar in comparison to something like GPT-3 or GPT-4. It's a chatbot. You chat with it. It can do tasks, math, coding, and creativity. We're all very well aware with this type of AI model. You might not have heard of Anthropic, but they're actually a pretty big deal, most notably in the amount of money they've been able to raise. According to Google's generative AI here, Anthropic had raised $1.5 billion dollars in funding that is no joke 1.5 billion with a b google of all companies is among the lead investors in anthropic's latest funding round anthropic and openai are our two boxers in the ring and their sponsors are google for anthropic and microsoft for openai those two big key investors if you're wondering how much openai has raised it's over 11 billion dollars now that we've got some context, we can talk about Claude 2. It is their new large language model, improved performance, longer responses, and can be accessed via API, as well as new public-facing beta website, Claude.ai. Two different ways you can access this AI today. By the way, on this Claude.ai website, it is completely free for you to test out and utilize. It doesn't have all the same features that ChatGPT has, but it's completely free, so why not? Claude is apparently very easy to converse with, explains things very clearly, and it is much less likely to produce harmful outputs. It's also got a longer memory. They have made some improvements from their previous models on coding, math, and reasoning. I'll let you in on a little secret, viewers. Coding is incredibly important for these large language models. If they can learn how to code, everything else sort of flows with it in terms of the logic and reasoning department. Learning to code is like a big supercharger for these AI models. Their latest model scored a 76.5 on the multiple choice section of the bar exam quite well. When compared to college students applying to graduate school, Claude 2 scores above the 90th percentile on the GRE reading and writing exams. To put this in perspective, 76.5 is in fact a higher percentage than GPT-4 performed on the bar exam. However, this is just on the multiple choice section, and we don't know what GPT-4 scored for only the, the multiple choice. It might have been higher. This is an overall score where this is just on multiple choice. The Claude 2 API for business is being offered for the same price as Claude 1.3, and yeah, Essentially, anyone can try this beta chat experience in the US and UK today. Here's a big kicker about this model. This is exciting. As we work to improve both the performance and safety of our models, we have increased the length of Claude's input and output. Users can input up to 100,000 tokens in each prompt. That is freaking huge. By the way, GPT-4's token insert limit is 4,000, not 100,000, so this is orders of magnitude larger than ChatGPT4 in terms of how much data it can input at once. That means that Claude can work over hundreds of pages of technical documentation or even a book. Claude can now also write larger documents from memos to letters to stories up to a few thousand tokens all in one go. Pretty impressive. A few thousand token output is definitely good. All right, long inputs, multi-step output, summarizing and making a highlight table. So now he's going to upload two separate papers. And yes, viewers, by the way, you can attach things into this new Claude. It can actually read your files. And this is all for free, whereas ChatGPT, you have to pay 20 bucks a month now to get access to Code Interpreter, which allows for some file uploads. And the context size, remember, is a lot bigger for Claude than it is for ChatGPT. So essentially, asking the model to explain the importance of the first paper and for the second paper, make a two-column markdown table. Just go ahead and drag those files right in there and click Upload. Multiple articles, 83,000 tokens in total.
gives us a nice output, including the tables as we would expect from something like ChatGPT. This is the kind of work I expect out of ChatGPT with GPT-4 enabled and Code Interpreter which is like brand new stuff from OpenAI. This is competitive viewers trying to take the fight to OpenAI, man. Greatly improved coding skills, 71% up from a 56% on the Codex Human Eval, which is Python. And on GSM 8K, a larger set of grade school math problems, Claude 2 scored 88 up from 85. This is coding with Claude adding interactive data to a static map. So we've got this interactive map here. Hey, I'm going to ask for some data visualization help. First, we ask Claude to analyze our original static code. And check this out, viewers. This is amazing. Look in here, ask the original question. Go ahead and insert some JavaScript. Pretty insane. And it gives us the breakdown of the JavaScript code. This map.js file renders an interactive world map visualization using d3.js and gives us a nice list of all the different things the code does. That's just a straight.js file. I mean, this is crazy stuff, viewers. A week ago, this is stuff that we wouldn't be able to do with ChatGPT at all. So Anthropic with Claude 2 is catching right up. So next we ask Claude to write code that adds a mouse over to make our map interactive. So we're actually adding for an entirely new feature on top of some complicated JavaScript code. And then it gives us the code output that we can toss into our JavaScript file. And this is going to be our new feature. Copy paste and run the new code. Now when you highlight over stuff, it actually highlights. This is an entire new feature that it added right to this JavaScript code. Freaking amazing stuff. Now, I'm not saying that ChatGPT can't write that code because it definitely can, but can it read that .js file? That's the real question. Because remember, it being able to generate this code in the first place came from the ability of reading that file. So if you want to learn about their partners and other stuff, I'll link this down below. But let's get into the testing. So again, if you go to the Claude.ai website, you are brought right here. You do have to sign in with an account. But other than that, it's completely free for the time being. So let's go over the uploads. 5 max 10 megabytes each. So you can upload up to 50 megabytes of data. Except PDF, text, CSV, etc. Anything that's got a bunch of text, essentially. If you want to pause right now, these are all the different file types that are supported. I see EPUB, IPYNB, obviously .js, .html, CSS, .config, .json, YAMLs, tons of stuff is supported. I want to do a quick test on creativity. I know that's not necessarily this model's main focus, but I want to see how diverse it is. Write an intricate rhyming rap about growing up as a watermelon farmer and becoming a millionaire from it. Oh wow, very, very fast response viewers. This thing is like snappy. Looks like there's a couple of rhymes in there. Let's get this thing read out by 11 labs as I traditionally do. The best AI text-to-speech synthesis in the game in my opinion. Uh, here's a rhyming rap about growing up as a watermelon farmer and becoming a millionaire. I grew up on a farm out in the country, planted watermelon seeds every spring, dutifully hoeing them rows under the hot sun daily. Working those fields sure wasn't easy, but I loved being a farmer through and through. Uh, growing juicy watermelons, red and few. I took pride in my crops, gave them care intently. So they'd grow large and sweet, quite plentifully. People would come from all around to buy my melons straight from the ground. They'd bite into that fruit and juices would spill. My watermelons were everyone's thrill. Business was booming. Demand was high. Folks wanted my melons. They'd pay any price. Before I knew it, I was raking in the green making crazy profits like I'd never seen from being a simple country watermelon farmer. I built an empire that spread out much farther. Now I'm living large. Money's no limitation. All thanks to my fruits and clever innovation. I'm a mogul now, but still got to say. OK, so it didn't seem to complete the end of it. Definitely rhymes. I'm very impressed. Most AI language models up to this point haven't been able to rhyme like this. So my bad viewers, the AI definitely did complete the entire poem perfectly. It's just that Eleven Labs new V2 model has an 1000 character limit. All right, good stuff, good stuff. All right, so I'm uploading an electric vehicle data set, which is a CSV. 
Explain this data set. Oh, my bad. Message is 14,000% over the uh, the length limit. Okay, interestingly enough, ChatGPT Code Interpreter was able to accept this CSV. I'm starting to think maybe ChatGPT Code Interpreter did not read the entire CSV. <laughs> All right, this data set on greenhouse gases is a lot smaller. Go ahead and upload it. Man, Anthropic Claude 2 is so fast. I've never seen an AI language model just boom, put out text so quickly. The data set contains monthly greenhouse gas emissions data for a company's facilities and fleet from August 2019 to 2023. Some hypotheses we could test our emissions are higher in winter months than summer months. Emissions from facilities are higher than fleet emissions. Emissions have increased over time. There is a seasonal pattern to the emissions. We can plot the total emissions by month to visualize the seasonal pattern. There is a clear seasonal peak in winter months and lower emissions in the summer months supporting this hypothesis. Overall, the data set shows some interesting trends and seasonality that could be analyzed further. All right, what if we just tell it to continue? Oh, it's just coming up with more other potential hypotheses. Apparently, with Control and K, we can create a new chat. It seems like we can go back to old chats if we want. It's just not the, uh, the typical... Chat GPT layout, so it does save your chats. Okay, viewers, I've got some example JavaScript code. It is a .js file. It's a simple game of Pong, and I want to see if Anthropics Claude 2 can figure it out. All right, uploading the .js. Tell me what this code does, please. The code implements a basic Pong game in JavaScript. Okay, so it completely understands what this is. Here's a quick rundown of what it does. It defines some variables, adds a key down event listener, move ball function, checks for collisions, checks for ball hitting, has a game state that can be start or play. Write some code to make this game have two balls and four players instead of two. All right, it's writing us some code. I'll let you in on a secret, viewers. I'm not much of a coding expert. Let me know in the comments, though, if you do any testing similar to this and uh, if it worked out for you. I mean, it's given us a step-by-step -step here. Two more paddles to keep track of their position. Advent listeners for the new paddles. Second ball element and position variables. It's very good at summarization, I must say. It kind of wraps things up very neatly. Very open AI-like. I mean, Claude 2 is a way better launch than even Palm 2 by Google was. I mean, this is a lot like just free chat GPT with the ability to upload these files and on a 100k context window. All right, now I'm attempting to upload one of my school textbooks. Give me the rundown on this entire textbook. Oh, too bad. This uh, this textbook is 31% over the limit of the text. So this is like 130,000 tokens, but still, this is a pretty long book. So we are definitely in the territory of book reading. So this website, viewers, is nat.dev. It's essentially a large language model playground that offers quite a bit of large language model access, including the larger GPT-4 models, and of course, the new Claude 2 model from Anthropic, as well as a bunch of free large language models, and some large language models that don't have the kind of nannying restrictions that we get from the likes of OpenAI, for example. Anyways, we can see that Claude 2 does in fact go up to 100k context window. Can we just copy like the entire SpongeBob SquarePants Wikipedia page? Oh, would you look at that? We pasted it all in. I imagine this is under 100k context. All right, now we're going to ask the AI language model for a summary of SpongeBob's greatest controversy. I assume there's some sort of a controversy listed on the Wikipedia page, right? Anything big enough for a Wikipedia page has a controversy. Oh, it's putting out some data here. Here's a summary of some of the major controversies around SpongeBob SquarePants over the years. And uh, then we get a, a bunch of controversies. Okay, the controversies are indeed listed inside of the, the Wikipedia page. So great job. You actually were able to pick them out. Proud of you, Claude, too. So one other really cool thing about this nat.dev website is the fact that we can actually directly compare two models. So we'll select Claude 2, and we're going to put it directly against GPT-4, which is a serious competitor. Go ahead and run with like a maximum length of 2,000 characters. Both generations probably won't be that long. I asked GPT-4 to come up with a complex prompt to test these models. Create an abstract narrative poem with an AABB rhyming scheme about a newly discovered celestial body in the Milky Way. The celestial body named Rhapsody's Resonance has a unique feature. It emits a signal that somehow synchronizes with the human brain wave pattern. And it needs to have the following components. It needs to include an intergalactic explorer character, the exploration of the mind-brain problem, 
the emotional journey of the intergalactic explorer character, a twist ending that tests the reader's logic and understanding, the incorporation of precise scientific terms related to exploration. Please include a detailed explanation of the poem at the end to show your logic, creative process, and tools used to weave the story together. Okay, yeah, this is one heck of a prompt. And now we're going to head to head these two AI models together, both generating at a very quick rate. I gotta say, Claude 2 generates faster than GPT-4, but to be fair, there's a lot more server load on GPT-4. Getting some big character outputs right now from Claude and GPT-4 as well. Thousands of characters. All right, we ended with 1,800 characters. Fairly large generation in 21 seconds from Claude 2. Okay, GPT-4 is still going. It definitely has a slightly bigger overall generation. All right, and... GPT-4 did about twice the characters. Let's just listen to the poems and see which one that we like better. We'll go ahead and start off with Claude 2's poem. Again, Eleven Labs will read this out to us. Here's my attempt at an abstract narrative poem with the requested components. The stellar sphere of Rhapsody's resonance with telescope in hand. The starry skies he scanned, seeking meaning amidst the cosmic span. Philosopher turned astronaut on knowledge bent, floating through the Milky Way on discovery sent there in the celestial sea, an anomaly, glowing with syncretic glee, Rhapsody's resonance be. Emitting mysterious waves with human mind, it paves a pathway of neural phase entrainment as it sways. What implications may this disembodied bliss hold for the mind-brain schism we insist? Perhaps this cosmic chime can transcend space and time, and thoughts themselves may climb to universal prime. Yet as he pondered the affair, a growing dread arose. This stellar snare may lay all consciousness exposed. If mind and brain entwined, what room for soul defined? The silent stars declined to ease his troubled mind. With logic wavering, his ship set sail once more, but the explorer felt at his core a shift he can't ignore. Though Rhapsody's remains far flung midst the stars that hung, its resonant song still rung within his psyche strung. The twist ending implies that although the explorer has physically left the resonance of the celestial body, its effect has stayed with him, suggesting that the experience has fundamentally altered his consciousness in some way, forcing him to reevaluate his beliefs about the nature of the mind. The rhyme and narrative flow aims to subtly build an air of mystery and discovery, incorporating scientific terminology and alluding to the mind-body philosophical problem. The emotional journey takes the character from curiosity to dread to a tentative new understanding. Please let me know if you would like me to modify or expand the poem in any way. God dang, viewers. That was freaking good. All from a model you can try for completely free. Talk about a GPT competitor, man. That is good. I have yet to see uh, another large language model compete with OpenAI this closely. That was phenomenal. However, GPT-4s is a lot longer, and I know GPT-4 is going to be able to produce something good. I think if anything, it's just a little bit short. The rhyming, though, it, it got all these components. I mean, truthfully, viewers, that is incredibly impressive. Anyways, let's go ahead and test out GPT-4's response. In the vast expanse of the Milky Way's embrace, a philosopher astronaut sought solace in space. He, a wanderer, a thinker in the cosmos' grand design, found a celestial body that made the stars align. Rhapsody's resonance, he christened the new find, a beacon in the darkness to the human mind aligned. It pulsed with strange emissions, in sync with brainwave bands, a mystery of the cosmos born in distant starlit lands. A scholar of the mind-brain problem, he dared to venture near, to unravel the enigma of consciousness so clear, beliefs, desires, awareness in the brain's neural net, and the celestial body's signal, a harmonious duet. His journey through the cosmos, a voyage of the soul, brought him face to face with a cosmic, grandiose role. The signal from the star intertwined with human thought unveiled the truth of consciousness, a revelation sought in the quiet of the cosmos, a solitary tear he shed as the weight of his discovery filled his heart with dread. For if the mind and cosmos in unity could dwell, was human identity but a cosmic signal shell? But wait, a twist ensues for those who heed the tale, the astronaut, the philosopher, was but a spectral veil. 
his existence, his consciousness, a projection of the mind, a manifestation of the signal in the cosmos designed, the celestial body, the signal, the man in the abyss, all but facets of consciousness in cosmic genesis, the mind-brain problem resolved in a cosmic dance, the universe and consciousness, not chance, but a cosmic trance. Explanation, the poem narrates the story of an intergalactic explorer who discovers a new celestial body, Rhapsody's Resonance. This explorer is a philosopher turned astronaut with a deep interest in the mind-brain problem, a philosophical issue concerning the relationship between mental states, consciousness, and brain states. The celestial body emits a signal that synchronizes with human brainwave patterns, which intrigues the explorer. As he delves deeper into the mystery, he comes to a profound realization about human consciousness and identity. The twist lies in the revelation that the explorer himself is a manifestation of the cosmic signal, a projection of consciousness in the cosmos. This twist challenges the reader's understanding of the poem, subtly hinting that the explorer, the signal, and the celestial body are all facets of consciousness. Scientific terms like brainwave bands, neural net, and emissions are used to lend authenticity to the space exploration narrative. Philosophical terms like consciousness, mind-brain problem, and human identity are woven into the poem to explore the philosophical implications of the celestial body's unique feature. The poem uses an AABB rhyming scheme, which gives it a rhythmic flow. The twist ending is designed to be subtle and thought-provoking, challenging the reader's understanding of the events narrated in the poem. Overall, the poem uses a blend of scientific, philosophical, and poetic elements to weave a complex narrative about the nature of consciousness and identity in the cosmos. Geez, viewers, one thing is for sure. These AI language models are no joke. They are creative geniuses. Ah, man, this stuff just blows my mind wide open. I can't believe it. Obviously, GPT-4's poem was a little bit better than Claude's. It was longer, but still, I think they are comparable. I am extremely impressed by Claude, too. I like that the API is already available. I like that it's completely free to test out and use on the website. I like that you can upload files to create over an 100k context. Man, this thing is competitive, to say the least. Like, GPT-4's poem was longer, the explanation was longer, but it wasn't that much better. It was a little bit deeper. I think they are comparable enough to say that Claude 2 is a serious competitor. That was mind-blowing. Viewers, check out the Discord, check out my other videos. We, we should discuss this. This is incredible stuff. I am so blown away. Claude V2 should not fly under the radar. This is a serious advancement in AI large language models, and OpenAI clearly has some competition because it did not take Anthropic that long to catch right up here. This is incredible. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.